What's going on everybody? It's Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer. And yesterday we saw the division dev team really break their near three month radio silence as they took to Twitter and the UB forums with stats and news for the future development of the game. Now what was said and what we should expect from all of this is what I wanted to break down for you today. But before we begin, in case you haven't yet smashed that sub button for intensive division content, please do so. And don't forget to ring the bell to receive all future upload notifications from my channel. All right, we've got a ton to talk about, so let's get this one started. First things first, we got this wild set of stats posted over on Twitter, and I have to admit, I geek out on stats and numbers in general, so let me quickly run them down for you. All right, so here's that tweet. I'm sure you've all seen it. I'm just going to run down it really quickly because I like the stats and numbers. 40 million players for the franchise. That is four times the population of Sweden. March 2020 saw the Division II's highest activity. Keener stood no chance. I can't actually confirm that, but yeah, anytime I went into the boo when Woni first dropped, there was tons of agents in there. It was great to see all the activity. Really reminded me of when the Division I first launched, and we all had to wait in line to actually activate our agents over in NYC. Anyway, moving on, Agent Armor got destroyed 11 billion times. 20 billion items have been looted, got to loot them all. 937 million squad members revived. That is an average of 1.3 million a day, which is insane. And this stat down below is absolutely mental. One agent has revived more than 27,000 agents. Dude, that is sick. Jumping to the other side, 109 billion NPCs have been killed. That includes the beard. Of course, we got to go after Yannick the beard. 156 billion shots were headshots. That's great. Keep nailing those headshots for that extra damage. 17 billion NPCs have been skill kills. Which one do you think has the most? I'm going to either say uh, drone or turret. 97 million floors completed in the summit since TU-11. That is more than the distance to the moon. That is... That scares me. Just honestly, that scares me that people are playing the summit that much. One agent has cleared more than 36,000 floors. Once again, that scares me even more. So you got an agent over there who has actually revived over 27,000 agents and another one who's cleared more than 36,000 floors. Both of those agents are straight up bosses. That is crazy. That is some serious dedication. Okay, so also attached to this tweet was a link to further information spelled out in this Division 2 press release, and I'm going to read this for you and make commentary. Agents, as promised a few days ago, we want to provide you with an update on the current status of the Division 2, its upcoming content, and the game's cadence moving forward, which I agree, we needed information on all three of those areas. So let me go. The Division 2 in 2020. We are proud of what we were able to achieve with the Division in 2020. Like most of you, our team had to adapt to this new normal, yet it was in that time that we reached an amazing milestone for the Division franchise. We are thrilled to announce that the Division franchise has reached over 40 million unique players. Now, I would have loved to have also received an average concurrent player count breakdown, but I believe that is guarded information within Ubisoft. Anyways, we wanted to take a moment to thank you agents for your continued support and passion for the games we create. The release of the Warlords of New York expansion in March 2020 also saw, saw the highest monthly active users for the Division 2. I would probably agree with that statement. This strong activity has been maintained throughout the past year as we continue to see new agents on the streets of Washington, D.C. and New York. Thanks to title updates bringing new changes and additions such as Seasons, Operation Iron Horse, and The Summit. Now, I do agree with this statement, or well, at least parts of it, as I'm constantly seeing new agents in the Boo and in the Matchmaker system. Now, as far as those new agents engaging with Operation Iron Horse or even The Summit, for more than just targeted loot. I don't know about that, but I do see lots of really low shade uh, rank agents dropping into the Boo and Matchmaker, which to me says new agents are coming into the game. We wouldn't be here today without your passion and continuous support. It is your support that fuels the future of the division. So again, thank you. Hmm, I really don't know about the statement, especially after that previous Division tweet stating something like, as some of you may have guessed, TU-12 was the last major update for the game. I mean, in reality, which is it? 
our community support for the game has never changed. It isn't like we all of a sudden took to the streets with torches and pitchforks demanding that the game stay alive. I mean, we've always been here. So that means the decision was made internally and from the looks of it with a hasty change of direction. Continuing on, as announced a few weeks back, we have begun work on new content for The Division 2. The development of this content will be led by a group of project veterans at Ubisoft Massive. This will see Adrian Traska and Yannick Bancharo, and I just want to throw in both of whom worked on both Division games, staying at the helm of the project as producer and associate creative director. We are also excited to announce that this new content will be made with the support of a talented group of developers at Ubisoft Bucharest. And for those of you who don't know much about Ubi Bucharest, they have assisted with games like Watch Dogs, Assassin's Creed, Ghost Recon, Just Dance, and The Division 2. And I've also been told that they've also assisted a lot with Q&A issues uh, with the games. So they have a history of making little portions of games i guess now at this point they're going to be tasked with coming up with this whatever this new game mode in this expansion whatever it may be in the next major update we are looking to bring a game mode that is entirely new to the franchise along with this game mode we are investigating new ways to progress your agent with an emphasis on increasing build variety and viability we will be revealing more about what lies ahead as the update gets closer Okay, me just jumping in again. So here is the portion of this press release where everybody needs to keep their expectations and imaginations in check. I mean, a new game mode could be anything. And notice it doesn't directly mention a new expansion, just a new game mode that is entirely new to the franchise. I mean, who knows what it could be? Or more importantly, will it meet the high expectations set forth by the community? I guess we're just gonna have to wait and see on all these fronts. Now there's also a mention of ways to progress our agents and increase build variety and viability and I've spoken about these mechanics in past uploads. Once you hit shade rank 1000 you stop accumulating stats for your agent other than materials and a few health points per shade rank so in reality once you hit this 1000 mark your progression is essentially over. Also just my two cents here one major way to increase build variety and viability is to rework the talents that are not currently used. Balance the weaponry, confirm and fix broken gear sets and their talents, and in general, make sure that what the text says on gear is actually what is happening in the live game. All right, jumping back to the article, the development of this new update is still in its early stages and will take several months to complete. As a result, our next major update is currently scheduled for release late 2021 at the earliest. We will be taking this time to make sure we bring a meaningful change to the game. Once again, this is just me, temper your expectations. Late 2021 could be December. Or if they wanted to use fiscal years, it could spill into calendar year 2022. Now, I appreciate the fact that they are using the time to make sure they bring a meaningful change to the game, as I do not want rushed and or buggy content to go live that really does nothing for the game. But just looking at these last three paragraphs here, there was a lot of verbiage used to say, in reality, very little. So just looking back over the verbiage of these last three paragraphs, and I have a feeling it could have been compressed into more something like this. We have begun new content development with the assistance of Ubisoft Bucharest, and rest assured, we have veteran leadership on this team like Adrian and Yannick to help guide this process. We are looking into creating a completely new game mode for this content release, but as you know, this content creation takes time, and you should not expect anything to hit the game until late this year, if not early next year. We appreciate your understanding into this matter, as we here at Massive were really caught off guard once the announcement was made that new content was coming to the game. In the meantime, we are looking into revamping the agent progression systems, as well as reworking gear and weaponry talents along with balance passes and bug fixes for the items that are not currently functioning properly. So basically, I just laid out everything that was in this press release article in one paragraph, but I guess the article needed more flair, so they just chose to do it this way. Okay, so continuing on through this article, let's take a look at the last portion of this press release. 
While we're hard at work on the next content update, we will rerun previous seasons released during year two. In other words, the next season, season five, will be a rerun of season one, giving you the chance to collect rewards and collectibles that you might have missed out on. This also means there will be regular leagues and global events for you to participate in. On top of rerunning seasons, we will continue to support the game with new apparel events and some minor title updates focused on game health me just giving my opinions i really don't know how much of the remaining player counts that we currently have will be there once this new content releases as slogging back through the seasons is going to push players away and into other games lastly we want to provide you with an update on our state of the game streams hamish bode our long-term host and one of the original architects of the state of the game streams has recently taken on a new role within ubisoft meaning that he will no longer be hosting the stream or be a part of the stream setup we want to take the time to congratulate Hamish and thank him for everything he has accomplished in his seven years working on The Division, and we're certain many of you will miss him as much as we already do. Just from me to Hamish, good luck, sir. You've been a part of the community since the beginning, and I certainly cannot fault you for taking a promotion. Now, FYI, I did also notice a post over on Twitter stating that just because Hamish is leaving the team does not mean State of the Game is cancelled. Continuing on with the last little portions of this article, again, we want to thank you for your amazing support, and we can't wait to get your input on the future of The Division 2. We will return with information as soon as we are ready. Until next time, The Division 2 development team. Okay, so again here, we've got lots of verbiage. We've got stats, etc. thrown our way, but in reality, very little set in stone. We got a little bit about the team, the content, this proposed time frame, and the future, but in reality, most of it was extraordinarily vague. And at this point, it's probably all they have to give us. Now, what I would suggest is that if the dev team and studio wants there to be any players left for when this new content does drop, especially after being thrown into another season's grind, then there needs to be a steady stream of updates and even teasers released between now and then. Now, of course, when there is news, I'm gonna be covering it for you, but as I look at this calendar, there is a wide open range of months that we may have to endure without any new content or news. And there are lots of titles hitting the market between now and then aimed squarely at slicing off huge chunks of the division player base and calling it their own. Without a roadmap and real hope for the future, I honestly don't know what will be left once the division two does get back onto the player base's radar. Now, just me again, I hope I haven't taken too negative a tone with this commentary, as I'm always hopeful for this franchise, but at the same time, I wanted to come with the facts and speak my opinions as to what was said and how it was relayed. Okay, I think this is a great place to end this one. And as always, I look forward to reading your feedback in the comments section below. In case you haven't yet done so, please smash that sub button for intensive division content. And don't forget to ring the bell to receive all future upload notifications from my channel. If you could take the time to rate and share the video, it would be greatly appreciated. Links to support my content creation include Patreon and Teespring, both in the video description below. Don't forget to follow me over on Twitch for weekly division streams, and of course on Twitter for all my latest thoughts on most things gaming related. Until the next one, this is Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer, signing off.